wondered how you can maximize social media to build reach and gain traction and engage your community and potential clients. Well, you're going to really love today's episode because today, Tamara Scampolino, a studio owner from Sydney, Australia, who's been doing this for nearly two decades, is on the show. Now, she is the director of Vibes Dance Studio, which offers an array of dance programs from two years plus. I really love Tamara because she has a great presence on social media for her business and she talks about the strategy behind that and how she really leverages off that community and that online platform and how she creates and delivers content within her team. It's a great story as well. She's going to share the ups and downs of the last couple of years and how they've evolved online to really create a great online presence and show consistency, style, and share great content with their community. It's a really, really interesting topic. So I hope you enjoy that today. Now, I must tell you, Tamara is awesome. (laughs) I actually know her because she's one of my clients that has graduated from my flagship course, Talent Manager Bootcamp. And she did that a while back. She's now started her own in-house talent management service, which is super exciting. And recently after just launching, you know, she got that first audition in the door, which is so exciting for her students as well. And she's really providing those amazing opportunities in-house, which is great. She's also a member of my Talent Squad membership, which is a mastermind group for studio owners who really want to level up their business and get the support for how they can provide a talent management service within their studio. Uh, Now, this is not just for people who are talent managers, but this, this mastermind is essentially for people who are also looking to become talent managers in the near future. So, It's so great to have one of my talent manager bootcamp graduates and a member of my talent squad here on the show. She's going to share her experience and expertise in the social media space and how she uses team and the skills of team to deliver the message and her brand message. This is what this is about, delivering a strong brand message online. You're in for a treat. Welcome to the show, Tamara. Here we go. Hey there, I'm Josephine Lankuba and you're listening to Business Arts and All That Jazz. I've been immersed in the creative business world and performing arts industry for over 20 years. I know from experience that being an artist, a creative or running a creative business can be a tough gig, but I'm here to tell you it's possible. I went from having zero dollars to my name and living below the poverty line to then living paycheck to paycheck, to finally living a life of comfort, happiness, passion, and even stability. In this podcast, I peel back the curtain and share with you the ups and downs of my journey. Plus, I tap into the minds of creative industry experts to discover their paths to success. I know you have a spark inside of you, that little voice that tells you to reach for the stars. I wanna help you step into your limelight to have the courage to live a life you dream of, a life that you design. So get ready to be entertained and inspired as we talk business, arts, and all that jazz. Before you meet Tamara, this is just a quick reminder that the doors to Talent Manager Bootcamp open soon. I would love you to jump on and join the waitlist so you don't miss the announcement because doors are only open for a very short time. It's limited. So if you're a studio owner who is interested in talent management and creating a talent management service within your studio so you can represent your students in television, film, commercial, theatre and more, jump on the wait list. It's josephinelanecuba.com forward slash TMB. That's TMB for Talent Manager Bootcamp. Link is in the show notes. Here we go. Hello and welcome, Tamara, to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Joe, for having me. Uh, and Happy New Year. Did you get up to anything special over the holiday break? or? Uh, well, we got two new puppies for Christmas, so that okay, was cool. our, that's was been my break pretty much, babysitting yeah. puppies. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of um, puppies are they? What breed are uh, they? They're a toy poodle cross dash hound. 
So they're kind of a bit sausagey, but then they're going to have curly hair, I think. So <laughs> it's, it's so <laughs> naughty. Are any sort of studio activities in the holidays or just a, like any workshops or just a break this time? No, around? just a break, but we do bring our preschool classes back two weeks before school starts. So oh. they always have shorter holidays. So we started that last week. How come? What's your thoughts around that? Why do you bring them in earlier? Uh, there's a few reasons. So one is obviously six weeks closing at Christmas time is a lot of time without income as are the other weeks throughout the year with the holidays. Um, so it's really, it's keeping our teachers employed because I don't teach the preschool classes. So it's keeping them going. It's keeping the business going. And also we find with the, the preschoolers, consistency is key. So even having one lesson off can throw them off. So when they have two lessons off or more than that, it could be, it can be a nightmare, bring them back. So yeah, we just try and keep them going and yeah, yeah. it works well. I love that idea. I love that. Now you have been running your studio vibes studio in Sydney, uh, Australia for 17 years. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. This is, this is year 17. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God, I feel so old now. No, oh, no, not at all. I mean, look, you know, um, you've been running it for so long, but how did you actually start your professional dance journey? Like you you would have been a student yourself, I'm assuming, and then did you did you work professionally or did you go straight into, you know, teacher and studio ownership? Like how did it all kind of begin for you? Okay, so yeah, I, I was a professional dancer. So straight out of high school, I got my first contract in Taiwan at a theme park. Mm -hmm. And it kind of just went from there, obviously. So one thing led to another and I spent about 10 years overseas. So I did everything from cruise ships to a couple of musicals. I lived in London, America, lived on the cruise ship for about five years, um, it, which is actually where I met my husband. 20, oh, wow. we, we met in twenty. No, 2000. My God, we What's met in 2000. Dance cruise ship life like? Um, well, look, I obviously loved it because I stayed for so long, so many contracts, but I did start my first contract on the ship with my best friend. So I had him with me for a few contracts and then I had a whole group of new people who actually I knew some of them from Australia. So, yeah, I was lucky um, to have great people with me. And obviously when I met my husband, he was to be my future husband. I did, did not know that at the time. <laughs> Uh, we were able to spend time together on board. So, yeah, I loved it. I really did. I loved the travel as well, obviously. And, you know, this is back in the days. So 1999, I went on my first cruise ship. We didn't really have them here. No cruise ships were coming here and taking dances. That wasn't happening. So I actually got that from I had I did a show at Jupiter's Casino on the Gold Coast. When it was Jupiter's, it's the star now. Yes. Did a show there for a year. Then they took I remember Jupiter's, season. don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I've done two shows there over the years when they were running the shows there, which was yeah. amazing. But that first show I did, they took us to Sweden for a year with the same show. He was a magician. He was Swedish. Took us over to Sweden. And from there, another contact uh, got me onto a cruise ship. So that's kind of how that happened. And, um, yeah, so about 10 years, I think. I kind of lost track because <laughs> it feels like a whole nother life. Totally. Um, and then yeah. when you came back, was it? straight well, into studio ownership or, or what no, did that start like? No. So I came back and um, I came back because I was missing home life, missing my family. I have a brother and sister who are 10 and, 10 and 11 years younger than me. So they were still growing up when I went overseas. Uh, so I came back. I actually found it hard to get work as a professional dancer here because nobody knew me. I'd been out of the picture for so long and agents were saying, oh, go and keep up your dance training. <laughs> I was like... Really? Come on. So, um, you know, I, I did get by, I did get an agent. Um, so I was doing a bit of that and I was teaching for a friend of mine and I suddenly thought, hmm, I could do this for myself, I think. Uh, obviously, I didn't really understand what I was getting myself into back then. Uh, you know, I was looking at, you know, a class of 20 kids in front of me. Oh, my gosh, these 20 kids are paying this much money. My friend's making this much money. I mean, I can do that. And then, you know you 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 realize that there's so many factors that come into that and um yeah that's not how it works but that's <laughs> definitely how I got started I just wanted to start a dance studio for myself that's and, so funny. Um, it's similar to how I started I remember I was working for someone else yeah um and just providing classes in like 
different schools. So they had a program that they ran in multiple schools and locations. I thought, I could run this. I could run this so much better. And and then I started and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's a bit, it's a bit harder than I initially thought for sure. Um, 17 years, such a long time. And and I can Mm -hmm. see, uh, you know, you work with me, you know, as a client, but I've seen on your social media over the last um, few months that I've known you, that you do have a really strong branding presence. Mm. Is that something that started immediately? Like, did you always have a flair for for branding and messaging or was that something that happened slowly over time? Oh my gosh, so slowly. Because if you think back 17 years, we didn't have social media. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not have a laptop when I was running my studio. I didn't have a software program to run the studio. You know, receipts were in a little receipt book. There was just nothing automated at all. Um, and also I am probably the most untech person that there is. So when things started happening with social media, I mean, there was just something that I was never going to understand. I didn't want to. Um, but my husband, uh, he's we are partners in the business. Mm. But he, so I met him on the cruise ship, but he was um, an audio technician on board. So okay, he's so not the chef. <laughs> no, not the chef. But he's really, he's Italian, so he, he cooks a good pasta. Yeah. Um, but um, so, yeah, so he he sort of had the techie side, which was good, but then he had a real passion, I guess, for social media um, as it was sort of evolving. And so he did a few courses and he got us started. The only problem with that was that I had to, it was kind of like a two-step thing. He would write something, I'd have to prove it and fix it because his English is, English is not his first language. So there were mm-hmm. always a lot of mistakes. Or sometimes he'd post something and I'd go, oh my God, you've said it wrong. Or, you know, it just, yeah. that was kind of, that was a little bit tricky, but we got by and he kept studying and he still does our Facebook ads, but I've been able in the past year or two, 18 months, to hand over the social media management to my studio manager. So, and she's young. She, her name's Eva. She was a student with me. Um, she danced with me until she was 17, went to uni. I got her to come back as a teacher. Our preschool program grew. So I asked her to be preschool manager and I didn't realize how amazing she would be because she has the tech side and she knows what to do on social media and she's really great with computers and she got us going with all the branding and she is quite happy to spend the time to sit down and learn anything she doesn't know. Um, She gets into Canva, she does everything. So I have literally nothing to do with the social media. I see it in my feed and I always like it because I think it's great. But, (laughs) But yeah, that's not me doing it because it's really, it I would never, ever be able to do it. I wouldn't have the time, first of all, but I don't have the passion and it's just not something I can ever get my head around. So I love that you've utilised the skills of someone within your team. And I I often say this, like, why not leverage off the people in your, in the room? Like, it makes so much sense. And I think that we do underestimate some of our team in other areas. And I, I like to now ask the question, you know, what are you interested in? What have you studied in? What are you passionate about? What are you good at? You know, and sometimes they'll surprise you. I mean, sometimes they come back and say, actually, I did a photography course. Really? Hey, why don't we do a test shoot? (laughs) You know, (laughs) Because it keeps them engaged, right? So as well, because then they're doing something they're passionate about as a part of their role. So you keep them for longer. But I love that. Yeah. So listening out there, is there any young whippersnapper on your team who's good with socials? That's a good, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you actually how you keep up to date with your social media presence. So, mm. I mean, I know that you've now got someone doing that for you. Um, how do, do you have to communicate anything? Like is there a share space for images or videos yes. or how does that all come together and they receive the content they need to actually share? Yep, yep. So, and if, you know, we've obviously learned this over the past year. We've Im- implemented a lot of new systems into the mm. studio. Um, And one of those is the sharing of photos or videos. So all the teachers take photos and videos in their classes. We have a Slack. We have Slack and we had a channel in Slack. for What's Slack for those that don't know? So Slack is a, um, what is it? It's like a a communication tool, I guess. 
with your team. Um, now, this is something I knew nothing about. This was all Eva. So she got mm -hmm. me onto Slack. She got me onto Asana. Um, so Slack we used to communicate. So instead of Facebook messaging our, my team, we have Slack and you can have different channels in there. So different topics, I guess. And you just choose the topic that suits what you want to ask or what you want to say. So we have one for preschool, one for circus, one for ready, set, dance, one for injuries. And then you can individually message your staff as well, or whoever's in there. So we had a Slack channel just for photos, which we were using, um, but they can only be kept for 90 days, Eva discovered recently. So she just started a Google uh, Google Photos Thing. I'm going to call it a thing because again, you know, I'm not I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So now all that's our... in the drive, you can you have the little yeah. Google Photos option where you can mm -hmm. upload your images and it stays in like that cloud space. That's right. So we're yeah. we're now using that to throw all our photos and images in there, and she takes from there as she needs to for the social media. And the good thing with that is it can tag people, it can recognize faces or mm. whatever magic it does in there. Uh, which makes it easier for her because we had to say say farewell to one of our teachers at the end of last year. So she just wrote in Miss Tessa, whatever she did, and it popped all the photos of Miss Tessa. So that's where we share everything and that's where Eva takes it from to do her posting. Yeah, I love that. I mean, look, you know, this is just about deciding about your terms of communication with your team, right? So if you, for us, we actually use WhatsApp which is not probably anywhere near as techy as um, your platform, but it works. Um, we have a WhatsApp group and we literally just upload, you know, photos and videos in there and we just make sure we put a comment, like ex explanation, you know, preschool class, January rehearsals for show or whatever, you yeah. know, and that's it. So it's probably not as good as that, though. I like what you're saying with the different um, categories so people yeah. know exactly. I like that. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, Slack, really but then it goes away. So, yeah, Google Photos is the next thing. Yes. But there's so many options right at the end of the day. And I think the key there is that having a space in the mm -hmm. first place for your team to do it. Um, and do you, you would, I'm assuming, have media release permission and that sort of thing? Yes. So how do you go about that for anyone listening? Because that's actually a really important step that people do forget about. You yep. can't just post kids online these days. That's right. Yeah. So that, that's built into our um, our registration. So for our new, any new enrolments that come in, they have a link. It's all done online. They do their, free, we offer a free trial. Then I send out a link. If you'd like to enroll, click on this link and then, before the parents can actually sign off on that, they have to read our terms and conditions. And in there we have um, a statement about our media release and we explain what we would ever use photos or videos for throughout the year. And they sign that and submit. And then that's stored within Dance Biz. So I can always check that everybody's done that. Um, so yeah, so they they sign for that up. So annoying when someone doesn't though, isn't it? When they yeah. say no, you're like, no, oh, that just makes it so hard. <laughs> So far, no one said no. Like, it, oh, no, I haven't good. had that problem yet. But I do have people who say, can you just sign me up, you know, instead of me going online? And I say, no, I actually need you to do it. Because if if I sign them up, I don't have a piece of paper that they can sign the media release mm. in the system. So I need them to go through and do that. So that's mm. really important that, that that happens. Yeah. Okay. Do you sell and so do you sell directly from social media or is that not something you tap into? Um, do you mean for involvement? like for anything, I suppose? Like let's say um as part of your social media release, I'm assuming that like what's the intention essentially to your posts? I know that you'd have it just to engage people, to mm -hmm. grow your audience, but do you actually have direct selling like buy this? click here like do you actually sell from your social media or, or that's what's the intention behind your social media posts yeah so we do we sort of have you know click here for a free trial so free trial is the first thing we offer to anybody new but the way Eva has set up our socials it's very intentional um we have three the three columns on Instagram on the grid um have different um, purposes so one mm -hmm. column is just for preschool or ready set dance so if someone knows they want to just look at the preschool classes they can see and it's branded very clearly 
these are the preschool classes. They can see by the colours, by the pictures, and they can just scroll down and just look at that one column and get all the information they need. Um, and then our other columns are more sort of generalised, but one column has a green transparency filter on it because green yes, is I've noticed filter. that. Yes, yeah. that's your and brand the other color. Column, yeah, and then the other column is also sort of generalised, but it has um, like a green shape, so it's green and white, and the shape will move on the different photos. It's in a different position. So that's the overall look, but in terms of selling anything, really we're just promoting out what we do so we're just mm. showing the, kids the happy faces we don't have anything on there we don't have kids doing crazy tricks because that's not what we're about we are not a comp studio we have a couple of small troops but we are very much recreational so we might post some kids on the the dancer Kalira but they're not doing a crazy over split or, you know, they're yeah, doing yeah, yeah. A, a skill they've learned that they think is awesome, you know, and that a parent could look at that and go, oh, my kid could do that, you know, so it's it's relatable. We're keeping it relatable yeah. for them. And that's yeah. important, isn't it, having intention behind everything because I think sometimes people slap their content online and hope that it does something miraculous but it doesn't really work like that there's a lot of consistency required yes. um and there's a lot of intention required so you know you've got your organic posts which is the ones you pop up you pop up and then you've got your paid advertising they're two separate things right but you can still sell from your organic posts right but yes. obviously paid advertising is a whole nother whole nother ball game yes. um do you go down the paid advertising route as well as that organic posting that you do we do we do so my husband is in charge of Facebook ads so he'll do all the campaigns and uh, that's really his specialty um so we pretty much always have at least one paid campaign running it's usually for preschool because that is our our biggest market at the moment I guess I mean and that's your studio is going to grow from preschool up. So we really um, target at those preschool parents. Um, and we have, you know, we offer five different preschool classes and we offer classes from Monday to Sunday. So we we really have a lot to offer. So we Wait, really- Monday to Sunday, isn't that the whole week? Seven days? The whole week, yeah. Yes. Okay, wow. Yeah, I know. Well, that kind of happened last year because our Saturday classes were booking out really quickly. and. Mm. It was my teachers who said, why don't we do Sundays? I said, I'm not doing Sunday. And they said, we will. I went, all right. <laughs> so, yeah, we have um, two teachers that go in on a Sunday, sometimes three. And, yeah, we just run two classes in the morning and they're actually pretty popular. Because have you ever you had to go in on a Sunday? I'm only ever there if I've got something happening after. So, for <laughs> yeah. example, when we did our um, Studio Talent Collective photo shoot, that was on a Sunday. So yeah, I made sure yeah. I went in early and I was there to see the parents and the kids. And and also I like to sort of get to know them. There are some kids I just don't know who they are because mm. you know, I've never been there on that day. But, yeah, yeah. so we, that's how we're able to run classes seven days a week. Because, yeah. yeah. What, what's the regularity of your organic posts? I think people are very interested in this because we don't know you know, a lot of people don't know, well, how frequent should I be? How consistent should I be? What does your consistency or scheduling look like? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think Eva posts about, she does about three posts a week and they are mm -hmm. scheduled before that. She'll sort of batch a few on um, later. I think she uses later. Um, again, something I've never, ever looked at, but I you know. You can schedule now through, the, I don't know if it's called the meta yeah over some Facebook work, right. but you can actually do it there as well but yes you can use these yeah. programs as well yeah exactly um so she'll do about three a week and obviously I mean it can be seasonal it can be depending on what events you've got coming up so mm. when there's Mother's Day when there's Father's Day Easter we have special you know we might do more within that week um mm. but you know while we've got the Instagram grid happening Myself and the teachers will post on the stories when we're at the studio. So the stories are just kind of the random things, day by day, what we're doing, you know, if we're at a show, backstage at a show, whatever it might be. Um, but, yeah, we usually get about three posts a week out on Instagram, which then is shared to Facebook as well. So that's happening yeah. all the time. 
Now, being in the industry for some time, I'm, I'm assuming you would have seen some major changes um, throughout the years. And especially, I suppose, with the last couple of years, because we've had COVID and now we've got this inflation. I don't know if we can call it a crisis or not, but we've got this whole inflation situation in town, um, which is has to affect it affects people. It affects business. It just does. But have you seen a retention loss or or a slowdown? Like how how are you going through this period? Because it's been really tough on a lot of studio owners. So so what's happening in your business space? Mm. So yeah, we did experience a, a decent loss that first COVID year, twenty twenty. Um, we finished that year with 120 students and typically we would have about 160, 165 students. We always hovered at that same number year after year. Yeah. We dropped down to 120. Um, by the end of last year, 2022, actually, sorry, that was 2021, 120. End of last year, we hit 199. Uh, and that was the highest number I've ever had. Now, I have a small studio. We have one room. It's just the yeah. one side. So our classes are back to back, which is, again, another reason why we run classes Monday to Sunday. Um, mm. Everything's got to squeeze in because we have that one space. So, yeah, we got to 199. So that was our biggest number ever. How but, frustrating you know, that you didn't get to 200. <laughs> and 200 was my goal. I actually, I had set the goal for the year at 170 and then I reached that. You know, like I, I can like you just even, enroll like you know your kid or something. I don't know. Some go, yay! We can do it. <laughs> I know, I know, but you know what? I I was like 199. I'm so happy with that. Yeah, so that, happy. that was really great because not only did we do much better than the year before, but also I managed to get through that plateau that I had always been at around the 160, 170 mark. Yeah, I got through it, and that. But it was only because of the work I put in. And I've invested a lot of time and a lot of money into learning because, you know, like I said, 17 years ago, I started a studio with no business knowledge, no tech, nothing. I just got on and did it. But at the same time, I was still working as a professional dancer. So I had other income. Um, over the years, that sort of changed. I I stepped back a bit from performing and went more behind the scenes and I was running rehearsals for a company um, called Showtime that does children's ent entertainment. Mm -hmm. And that was good because I was running that in my studio. So it was, they were hiring the studio and they were hiring me. So that was nice. And I could fit that in around my own hours. Um, but then I lost all of that in COVID, obviously. Yes, of course. And uh, the other thing was I, I teach in a high school and I've been doing that for about 10 years where I go in and I teach five to six weeks two terms of the year of either hip hop or Zumba. And that's just me doing it. It's a, it is a lot of work at the time, but it's a great little money maker for me. So I always had that on the side. So the business wasn't really like, oh, it's make or break. Like I, it's got to work to support me. I was supporting myself. But then COVID, I lost all the other stuff. And then suddenly the business had to support me and my family. So that's when everything clicked for me. So as bad as COVID was for our businesses, it was the best thing that happened to my business because I kicked into gear and I started following people on socials who really knew what they were talking about. Mm. And I started getting more involved with these people. I started mentoring, you know, I put myself out there and and paid the big bucks to go and get some one-on-one -on -one mentoring from um, a, a studio owner who does that kind of thing um and then it just builds from there so you know you know what it's like you follow someone on socials and then it leads to the next person it leads to the next and everyone's sort of intertwined and you just keep learning and growing and that's what has happened over the past two years I would say um and now I really feel like I have a business uh, what I had before was probably more feeling like I had a hobby on the side now yeah. I have a business and now I'm learning how to treat it as the business that it is. So, but it's constant learning. You know, I can't stop learning because there's so much I don't know still. And, and you know, you don't know what you don't know. So there were so many things that just were like, they really blew my mind. I was like, oh my God, no wonder I have sat at the same student numbers for so many years. No wonder this, no wonder that. But um, But it's been really... I've really enjoyed it. I've loved putting in the time and learning everything that I've learned over these past two years and I'll continue to learn as well. And it's following people like you, Joe, as well, because I found your podcast through 
I think it was when you interviewed Jade Barnes. Oh, she, yeah. That's the, posted, um, yeah, business yeah, that's the most popular yeah, one, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, and she had posted that on her socials and obviously, you know, there was a link there with Ready, Set, Dance. And so I listened to your podcast with her on it. And then I subscribed to your podcast and I've listened to every episode since. Yay, so, and now you're on it. You know, I'm on it. It's so <laughs> great. I'm so excited when you invited me. But, you know, that's how it happens. Yes, and that's right. Like-minded people. And you just keep learning new stuff all the time. It's yeah. great. And I think that consistency component as well, even with podcasting, I mean, it doesn't matter what you do. Uh, and I, you know, I have my own studio, but it's just that consistency component and you got to keep showing up and then people become attracted to you. And if they like you, you know, just like, you know, you found myself, but it's also, you know, how you're consistent on your social media and it'll track those new clients and you're consistent in your learning. So you were able to build your studio. I mean, what's the thing though, that's been keeping you motivated to go and find those resources and like, what's the inner spark that just motivates you to keep growing and, and learning? Do you think? That's so interesting because I actually woke up yesterday morning and I was really pumped. I was like, yes, I can't wait to open my laptop and get my books out and, you know, get onto another task. But like, I mean, it's ups and downs, isn't it? Like through the holidays, I've been very, I thought I was just unmotivated or demotivated, whatever it is. Um, but really, I just needed the downtime because I couldn't kick myself into gear to just do all these things I wanted to do. But now I think coming out of holidays, my son goes back to school on Friday. So I know, you know, we're wrapping up. Now I'm getting motivated again. <laughs> um, but it's purely, and also, you know what, I haven't, I think this is what it is. It's quite funny. I haven't been in my car a lot. And when I'm in my car, I'm listening to podcasts and that's when I get inspired. So over these holidays, I haven't been, you know, doing the school run and trekking all the hours in the cars. I'm not listening to all my podcasts. So I think it's really, you know, it hasn't been good for me. It's not really. <laughs> You know, I go for a walk in the morning and put the podcast on. That's what I did this morning, actually. Yeah. Um, I was, I went for a walk and I put my podcast on. Who did I listen to this morning? I think Denise Stuffield Thomas. Yep. I follow her too. Love um, her. What's it called? The thing? Money. The podcast? Yeah. I can't even think right Jill now. and Prosper. Jill Is and that, Prosper. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 So I was listening yeah. to that this morning going, oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> 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 Got to do it. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, I would love to know uh, a little bit about, now, uh, as I've said in the intro, Tamara was a beautiful member of my Talent Manager Bootcamp course, and she's now leaping in, right? Leaping into talent management. So we're going to dive into that really soon after this short break. Now we're going to take a tiny short break where I'm going to introduce you to some studio owners who have just come out of my course, Talent Manager Bootcamp. Introducing Caitlin and Stephanie from Ignite Dance Co. and Isabella from N2 Dance Productions. We've just finished the Talent Manager Bootcamp with Josephine Lane Cooper. We found it really informative, but also super easy to follow along and to fit into our busy studio lives. Our weekly meetings with Joe were also really helpful in consolidating what we had learnt in the weekly modules. And Joe made it really, really clear um, and easy to see how much it would benefit us and our studio growth. After completing the course, we now feel ready to implement and are excited for what this will bring to us in our studio. Hi there, I just wanted to jump on and share my experience in the Talent Manager Bootcamp course that I've just completed with Josephine Lane Cooper. Um, I think Jo is such a great personality and she's managed to fit all of her information and knowledge into some very bite-sized manageable pieces during the course. Um, each of the modules I found really exciting and I could see how we could easily implement this in our studio. Um, and also we had our weekly meetings which really consolidated everything that we had learnt in the courses. Um, I would highly recommend the course for any studio owner looking to improve and expand their current offerings in their studio. Okay, welcome back. So let's talk about this because uh, you finished my course, Talent Manager Bootcamp, um, and then you went on to be a Talent Squad member, and which is my membership, and recently you launched your own in-house talent management service. So yay, right? You were talking about learning and growing and, and doing these new things to build your business. So that's really, really exciting. What made you personally decide that talent management was the next step for you and your studio? Hmm. 
Um, well, I, the dance studio that I grew up at, we actually, they had an agency as well, an in-house agency. So I grew up in that field and I grew up going to castings and auditions and that was really, that was just normal for me. And then when I started my studio, it was nothing I really considered because I didn't have any knowledge in that side of things. How would I do it? I just didn't consider it. Um, but then, you know, from listening to your podcast, that must be how I heard about it. It really like straight away, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Okay, I'm gonna do the the boot camp. And so I signed up for your boot camp. And to, actually it was really easy. Your lessons were they weren't too long because you know some courses you do, the lessons are super yes. long and it's too much. I can't take in a lot at one time. And sometimes I have to mm. re-listen to things just to really um get it in and let it soak in so yeah it was really good short lessons and um and I got through the boot camp and I was like yeah why wouldn't I do this like this is mm. you know it's, it's a no-brainer and having you if we get stuck if I've got a question I can email you I can ask you you know it's not like I'm out there doing this by myself with no one to guide me I have guidance yeah. um but you know I am still in the early days because we started end of last year and we got a photo shoot in and so you know I got um I think I'm at I've just had another two sign up a couple of days ago. I can't remember my total number now, but it's I think, I think it's around 20 something. Um, which, which is really- such a great start to be yeah. representing 20 something artists, I gotta say. And what a what a great result, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. I think the key is, you know, and actually the truth is I've been running a, an agency within my studio for years, and I didn't realize until I really thought about it during COVID because, you know, COVID made you internal, like internally think about all the things. And as I looked around, I went, this is really odd because I was um, still getting revenue from the agency during COVID, but my studio, obviously, for for reasons we all understand, um, plummeted. And even though we were on on, online, we retained 40%, but we lost 60% during that that initial lockdown which was the nature of things but I realized that I retained students in the agency and I thought oh I bet you there's heaps of studios that are doing this and then I realized there wasn't Mm -hmm. oh people the people have to know yes yes and you know I mean it's it's pretty genius really because I remember saying to my husband hey there's this lady she owns like dance studios she runs an agency and now she's training other dance studio owners how to do that how cool Mm -hmm. is that like it just seemed like no one else was doing it and I was like that's so cool it's such a great idea and obviously you know with my background I thought yeah why can't other kids have the same experiences that I did growing up because it was so much fun and so when I was marketing the agency to my students to my families Uh, I tried to make it relatable as well. And I let them know, you know, this is the kind of thing I did growing up. And, you know, my son has been in an agency for a little while and he's, he's been doing a few things. And I said, you look, he absolutely loves it. He has a ball when he's on set, you know, and, and -hmm. I think also the good thing is since COVID, you don't have to always go to an in-person casting now. Totally. The industry's changed so much from when we were performers, for example. I mean, anyone listening that was a performer knows you had to go in for an audition. There was no online no. audition process. And, and now always- all of it's online, first step anyway, that initial yes. casting, which saves so much time because you can self-tape, send it off, and then that's it. And then the callback will be in person or whatever, but that's it. So it yes. means that it's more accessible, I think, really to everyone. Is. And that's what I said to our families, because I know, like, even with my son, as he was growing up and I was taking him to castings before COVID, you'd find out the day before about a casting. It'd be in the middle of the day. You'd have to take him out of school. You'd have to drive into Alexandria or all Surrey Hills or wherever, you can't park anywhere. You know, yeah. it was always like so stressful. Um, and I was able to say, look, you really don't have to do much at all. You know, you do some self tapes, you know, it, it, it just feels a lot more simplified. And having your boot camp for me made everything very streamlined, very simplified. And now I'm understanding it. And yeah, and I, I'm I'm enjoy I've still got a lot to learn. And I actually want to go back and rewatch all your modules just to recap because I think that's good every now and then. Um <laughs> yeah. yeah. What was that initial photo shoot like? Like what was the vibe? Because um I always say that the photo shoot is the first step, you know, mm. in getting people engaged in the process and creating that online profile. What yeah. what was it like? in studio that day 
that was so cool because we we had a professional photographer obviously come in and set up and we had all the lights and the backdrop and everything was there and we booked all our kids in sort of one at a time but they overlapped so there'd be a couple of kids there at the same time and we were just there I was there hyping everyone up and just you know getting the energy nice and high and the parents were excited the kids were excited and they brought all their changes of clothes and it felt very professional and you know fixing their hair and and it just it was such a nice vibe and actually we used a lot of it well a lot of a lot of footage of the day for our socials obviously just to you know behind the scenes it's really cool you know when you take a photo of the photographer taking a photo of a kid and you know that that kind of stuff is really cool to see as well but uh, it was definitely exciting. And I, I was like, oh, it brought back so many memories for me because I remember we'd always mm-hmm. go in and it was every year for new headshots and whatever. And Yeah. And then bring it back to that content because I know that you're very yes. much, um, you know, consistent around your branding and the content release. The fact that you're um, capturing those moments and being able to share those wins and those moments, mm-hmm. regardless if it's agency related or or anything that's happening in the space, it's really simple to do, isn't it? Just yeah. grab it on the phone and and share it, you know? Yes. yes, but that took me a long time to remember to do things like that. And it was always my husband saying or messaging me when he knew I had something like that on. Don't forget to take photos today. Don't forget to do behind the scenes. So he would always remind me because he knew how important it was. And sometimes as the studio owner, you're so busy or you're so caught up in what you're Lovely. doing. You forget. But now also my team will automatically do it as well. So I don't have to say to anyone, can you please take photos? They just take photos. And, yeah. then- and this can be part of your communication with your team and part of the training that you may have standards of sharing content as part of the training. Like we forget how we can actually utilize our team yes so you know on training day you might say hey guys this is what we actually do we have this group you share it blah blah so even when they're you know at the photo shoot or whatever because I know it's so busy and you've got so many balls in the air when you're running an event regardless of the size of it whether it be an in-house agency photo shoot or a concert recital or you know, maybe you've got all these kids on an excursion out to a, a festival where they're performing at, you know, wherever. It's such, it's such a thing to do. Like it takes a lot of energy. Yeah. Sometimes you don't want to stand there and go, oh my God, get the camera out. You know, so the fact that you can lean on team is amazing. Were they part of sharing the excitement of the agency? Did you involve them in that process as well? Or did it, was yeah. it re- revolving around your own messaging? Yeah, no, no, they did share in it. Um, Some of my team, so my younger teachers who are still maybe students, so kind of overlap. I mean, they've left school, but they still come and dance with us and they teach. A couple of them joined the agency because they were so hyped by it. It was it was such a big thing. Like the immediate reaction that I got when I put it out there was pure excitement from everybody. Even, you know, my teachers would walk in and go, oh, my God, I saw the email. That's so amazing. That's really cool that you're doing an agency. I was like, yeah, it is. It is really <laughs> cool. You know, I was, I was just like, okay, this is the next thing. I'm doing an agency. But then once they were like, oh, my God, how cool is that? I was like, yeah, it actually really is. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, do you think that the professional industry is for everyone? Because you're a recreational studio. Yeah. So that, you know, you you don't have comp kids, you said, or whatever, mm-hmm. um, per se. Mm-hmm. Is it for everyone? Like, how do you make it inclusive? Like, what's your viewpoint on that when it comes to accessibility and the level of talent? Mm-hmm. What What's your thoughts around that? Uh, oh, gosh, this is such a good question because I for this year I've created a new class Um, we have our troop class we actually had three troops over the past few years sort of junior inter senior ages uh, that would do all the comps and all the shows and then and I I had a lot of other kids who were very much recreational who would come to me and say Miss Tamara how do you get into troop Miss Tamara how can I do a private lesson Miss Tamara when can I go on stage and so I thought, why can't they? Why not? So I created a whole nother class. We call it company and it's brand new. So we haven't even started yet, but we've got some kids booked in. And it's really for kids who, you know, you typically wouldn't see these kids get on stage and compete, but they want to be on stage and they want to have fun and they want to perform. And so I've opened it up to any of our school age kids to be in this class and they get the performance opportunities that our other kids will get as well. And, you know, that's open to absolutely anyone. 
from mm. school age up, all abilities. I don't care because I know I can make it work. I can make something work with these kids because they've got the the passion and the enthusiasm. Mm. So and it's the same with the agency. You know, like I've said to our parents when I've been marketing it, it doesn't matter if they're not a great singer, a great dancer, a great actor. It doesn't matter. You know, maybe they have a hobby that a casting agent wants to see. Maybe they're really good at riding that bike or, you know, rollerblading, whatever. You know, it doesn't really matter. And you don't always know what kids can do. No, that's the thing. And I think we don't ever know what casting directors are looking for. And there's different levels of casting, sure. Like if the kid can't sing, you're not going to send them to be at an audition for the lead role of Simba and the Lion King. Got it. But there's no reason they can't be in a KFC commercial, you know? Like there's things for everybody. That's that's the beauty of it. And that's what I love about the industry. And I think for far too long, we've made it elite, untouchable, and we've made it for a certain type of artist or talent the industry's changed. It's diverse. It's nothing like it was before. And especially in the, you know, in the commercial space, at least um, they're looking for authenticity, you know, and I just love that. So it is for everyone. And I'm glad that you've created this company and that's inspired that to have this company where kids can come and just enjoy performance and don't have to be comp kids or whatever that's so cool and yeah they don't have to do a million other classes to be in that you know they have Mm. a requirement to do one other dance class and our flexibility strength class and that's it you know and and we put the flexibility class right after their company class so that they they're already there and we put it at a really good price special offer just because we still want them to improve we want them to to learn and to grow and you mm. know to gain new skills so we're just trying to offer that the extra little class that they might need but still give them it, it's and it all comes down to fun it's got to yeah. be about fun we don't want pressure that. we don't want stress we want them to have so much fun what advice would you give to a studio owner who's interested in talent management and representing their students professionally, you know, in television, film, theatre, commercial, but might be afraid or cautious to take the leap? What's your thoughts around that? Yeah, um, I would say, look, honestly, I, obviously anything new that you take on, you've got to take the time to do it. You know, you've got to take the time to learn or to watch the modules or to implement uh, it takes time, but what I am hoping once we get into this new year is that once it's set up, it's going to pretty much run without too much extra work from me. You know, like right now I'm doing the extra work because I had to organise the photo shoot and now I've got to make sure all their profiles, profiles are set up on casting networks. But once it's done, then it should really flow really easily. And that's what I sort of saw right from the beginning because because of the way you explained it and I thought, okay, if she's right, then this is going to be a nice little extra revenue stream, a nice extra thing for our kids and will only require, you know, a little bit of extra work from me because as a studio owner, you've got all the other things going on. But if you've got this on the side that just doesn't take too long to do but you still got your eyes on it, I think why not? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what Talent Manager Bootcamp is all about. It's about streamlining that process. Yeah. So thank you so much for being here today. Before we go and we wrap up, because I've I've absolutely loved this conversation, (laughs) Um, who inspires you? Mm. Um, I think my first big inspiration was my dance teacher growing up, Miss Jan. Um, I went to the Janice Breen Performance Studio and we grew up, we didn't do competitions, but we did a lot of shows. And obviously that's how I, I got into my career but um, but she's not with us any longer, but she has always been a big inspiration to me. And we used to do the carols in the domain every year as kids through her studio and her studio is still going and those kids are still on stage doing that. And every year I look at that and it just brings back all those special memories of that time, you know, performing mm-hmm. as a kid on a massive stage at Christmas time and all those memories. So, you know, and everything right through my career, everything I've done, I've gone back to Miss Jan and, the things that she said or the way she did things. And she was old school and everything was old school back then because it was 30 years ago. But I still think those old school school ways are sometimes better than yeah. what's coming through That's now. That's a beautiful legacy she's left there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love that. And what's next for Tamara? What's on the horizons? 
well, <laughs> I am busy trying to automate everything at my studio so I can finally take a step back. And that's not to say I want to just sit at home every day and, and watch Netflix. No, I want to, I just want a bit of freedom, just a little bit. I don't want to be rushing here and there. I'm in the car and I'm running late and I've got to get on the computer and reply to those emails and enroll those kids. And I just want everything to flow a little easier. And I'm getting there step by step. It's a slow process. Um, but yeah, so that, you know, it's it's automating myself, it's upskilling myself and the continuous learning. So, you know, I feel like I'm going to be a, a student for life pretty much just with the, the programs that I'm in and the memberships that I'm in. And I think those things are really important. Um, I'm off to a two-day conference at the end of this week, actually, for some dance studio owners, which I'm excited about. Yeah. And, you know, and that's the sort of thing, like in the old days, you would not befriend another dance studio owner. Like that was just unheard of. Everyone was your competition, right? That's well, right. Now, you know, we're all in this together and everyone's helping everyone. And yeah, and I just really like being involved in that. So, you know, we're still implementing some new programs at the studio. And the way I see it is for me, um, bringing in licensed programs has been a game changer because, you know, they're the programs that everything is done, the syllabus, the music, um, teacher training, it's all set up, ready to go. And I don't need to be the teacher doing the the classes. You know, at first I did, but then I learned, you know, step back, let the others do it. So I invest oh. in those programs and they really work. And I've got two more sort of elements of, of these pr programs coming in in the first half of this year. So that would be good. That was something we talked about today in our 90-day planning session. Yep. That you were yep. looking at potentially Cirque as well, which is very yeah. Helpful. So we we do have Dance Cirque already, but they've now released Trapeze, which is a new you know, apparatus. Do you so, own your studio or your sublet? Like, how does that work? Because you no, can lease all the equipment where you are. Yeah. So we lease, but we were lucky that our studio had the right um, beams for the rigging. So we have two rigs in the studio, in our one one space, you know, studio. We have two rigs and we just set it up for Cirque. Um, we've run Cirque for one year. We took it on last year and Beautiful. it's so popular. So now we'll introduce trapeze um, sort of next term because I'm aware that my head Cirque teacher, she's just starting a new job and she doesn't have time to learn the content and I don't want to push her. So I said, right. <laughs> Let's get let's just get the term started and we'll introduce it next term. Do you do trapeze and circ? Like is that your skill or no? No, no. So okay. I never learned any aerial work. So I was I've I was, got I get motion sickness. This is not a lie. I get I can't even like do a roly poly in the pool without coming up with my head spinning. So there's no, way. no, I would I, I mean I would do flips in the air. So it's not gonna happen. Thing. No. I'd it's love my to. calling. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's not mine either. So no, so I have teachers who do that, you know, and, and that's the beauty of all of this. And they yeah. got trained up. I didn't have to do the hours of training. Um, and I I paid my staff to do those hours of training. And Amazing. yeah. Yep. I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much again. And I look forward to seeing your in-house talent management service grow and flourish this year, as I know it will especially with all your dedication and, you know, it's only the beginning. So a huge congratulations on backing yourself and for providing amazing opportunities for your students. And yeah, I just can't, I can't wait to see what's next. Thanks Thank so you. much for being on the show. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Take care. Bye. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Don't forget that the doors to Talent Manager Bootcamp are opening soon and you do not want to miss that announcement. So if you're ready to level up your studio and go from studio owner to talent manager, then this one is for you. Jump on the waitlist today. That's josephinelanecuba.com forward slash TMB or find the link in the show notes. Hope to see you there.